We're in the middle of a very brief Premier League winter break and it is, of course, January, so I thought now would be a good time for me to jump on and offer up the first transfer update I've done since last summer. Now, it doesn't take a genius to work out why I've waited until this point in the January transfer window and that is because it's been extremely quiet around Liverpool. Not too many links to shout about and the reason behind that really is that my understanding is that Liverpool are very, very unlikely to do business in this January window. Of course, not long left now, but I think that's really been the plan from the start. Obviously, there are a few gaps in the squad at the moment. You think about the injuries that Liverpool are contending with, but ultimately, they think a lot of those players are going to be back soon. So I've got a list here. You know, Sobers Lai is not too far away from coming back. Andy Robertson and, and Costa Simicast, both those left back injuries, they're expected to be back in training by the end of this month. Endo and Salah, of, of course, away at tournaments, but they should be back mid Feb at the absolute latest. If the worst case scenario, they both get to the final. And Thiago and Bajcecic, they're two players who are expected to come back around February time to be training, so hopefully can play a decent role between now and the end of the season. Of course, that o o only leaves Joel Matip, who is that long term injury, but. The reason Liverpool aren't looking out there in the centre-back market in this particular moment to maybe move in January is because Jarrell Kwanzaa has stepped up and been hugely impressive, hasn't he, in this early part of the season and you would back him to continue that between now and the end of the campaign. So that's Liverpool's reasoning really that they think that they're getting so many players back in this period or they should do from injuries and yes, they'll get a few more injuries but they think they've got enough in the squad there to get them through until the end of the season. And when you look at the position in all four competitions, you know, top of the Premier League, as I'm speaking now, they're going well in the League Cup. They're, you know, one foot in the final, they've got an aggregate lead over Fulham. FA Cup, they obviously got to keep going in that. That's only just starting up around now. And then, of course, they've got Europa League to contend with, but the, the ease through into the, the knockout stages of that. And we'll probably start naming stronger lineups from this point on, but they're the huge favourites to go on and lift that competition. So, you know, if you get a few players back there, it's it's understandable, I think, that Liverpool think they've got enough because they, they, they're doing so well so far and that's without this raft of players they've been missing in this period. If you can just get a little bit of luck on that front, they really do have a, a, a really strong squad that, that's packed with options. Of course, I'm talking about the fact that, that Liverpool aren't going to do any business in January, but that actually hasn't stopped the links emerging for potential business they might do in the summer. So, while we've not got anything to, to really get our teeth into around what Liverpool might do in January, unfortunately... I do think it's worth sort of talking about some of the links that are emerging for the summer. And I think it's interesting that, you know, I'll start with the, the fact that there's been a few links around centre-halves have been emerging recently. And one of those that I've written about this week was Usman Diamande at Sporting Lisbon. Now, he's only 20 years old and has played a lot of games for them since signing for Midland. He only signed actually a year ago and he's looking really promising, been straight into their sort of first choice defence and... It's interesting that he's linked because Gonzalo Inafio, who's his teammate at Sporting, is a player who's been linked with Liverpool for for quite a while, actually. And, and maybe people thought that if Liverpool were going to sign a centre-half either now or, or in the future, that maybe he's one of them that would be near the top of the list because he's so highly rated and, and really well-known around Europe. And a lot of clubs are known to be sniffing around him. But I've never really had massive encouragement on the Inacio front. Even last summer when he was you know, most regularly linked, I, I never really got encouragement from sources I was speaking to that he was 100% a target. And it makes you wonder whether, you know, was Diamande the one they, they wanted to watch a little bit more of when they've been at sporting games? Is he the one that's caught the eye? The one thing I will say about Diamande as well is, is that, yes, I've been given encouragement that Liverpool, he is a player that they're looking at, he's a player that they're scouting. But it was put to me in this way that, you know, if you've got a promising player who's 20 years old and he's playing in a top five European league uh, for a club who, you know, huge demands around sporting, they're expected to win every week, you know, similar to Liverpool, the pressures that are on them. Um, if you've got a 20 year old coming in, in in a defensive role there and doing really well, then, you know, it would be remiss of Liverpool scouts, wouldn't it, to, to not be keeping an eye on a player of that sort. So I think, you know, yes, he's someone that Liverpool are looking at, but I would also you know, err on the side of caution saying he's definitely someone that Liverpool are targeting or even in fact that Liverpool are definitely going to sign a centre-half in the summer because I know a couple of names have, have come up Lenny Yoro is another one who, who is at, at Lille uh, he's another name who's been linked an 18-year-old centre-half who, who again is doing well and, and similarly to Diamande you know, Liverpool wouldn't be doing the due diligence if they weren't looking at players like that if they weren't keeping tabs on them to see how they develop but as I say no guarantee I think that there's going to be a centre-half in this summer and that, that for me is for a couple of reasons I mean you look at what's coming through at the academy at the moment uh, you know Jarrell Kwanzaa is, is, is one to talk about of course he, he, he's he been doing so well this season and, and Liverpool will look at it and I know Jurgen Klopp this is definitely how he thinks his kind of 
look, I've got a huge talent here. He's, he's doing really well for me. He hasn't let me down so far. If I sign another centre-half, am I going to block his pathway? And, you know, that is a question that, that, that I think is worth examining because, yes, there's going to be a spot opening up in terms of centre-halves with, with Joel Matic. We expect him to leave at the end of his contract. But should Jarrell Kwanza be the one to assume that role? And, and, and ultimately, you know, I think that's a decision that the manager has to make, really, because... I'd be kind of surprised, I think, if he goes with five centre-halves, five centre-halves who are worthy of getting first-team minutes because I just think, yes, you do have you know injury proneness in, in Ibrahima Kanate, but I think, is that going to be too many options? That's kind of the decision that, that the manager has got to make. And I think another thing that comes into it as well, which also links back to the academy, is that you've got Conor Bradley emerging now and, and he's doing really well. Uh, you know, did really well against Fulham. I'd expect him to stay in the team until Trent Alexander-Arnold is back because Joe Gomez is needed at left-back. And I think he's got a real opportunity imp- to impress now. And say he does come through and he really builds on his promise and, and makes himself an option as a backup right-back next season. What does that mean then for Joe Gomez? It means he's probably very unlikely to get minutes at right-back. You know, if you've got Costa Simicus and Andy Robertson free, he's very uh, available, sorry, he's very unlikely to get minutes at left-back as well. So if that allows him then to completely concentrate on playing as a centre-half and being a one of four options there, which could be, of course, Van Dijk, Canate, Gomez, and then and then Quanta as your fourth one. Now, maybe the manager will look at it and think, that's enough, we, we, we don't need to add another centre-half here. I know some of you may disagree with that. Please let me know in the comments if, if, if that is going to be the manager's thinking. Would you disagree with that? But I think, you know, he'll want those four to be able to share out minutes between themselves, ensure everyone's involved. That's something that he likes to, to make the players feel like they're, they're fully involved in the squad and they're going to get minutes. Uh, and also with someone like Quanta, you don't want to block his pathway. You don't, you know, you only end up with Curtis Jones playing as well as he is at the minute and being a big part of the squad by playing him in moments where he's not the finished article moments where you know in games where he's going to make mistakes and it's good he's going to have difficult moments you only get to that point by putting minutes into these players so the huge decision really for me is whether you know the manager decides that Kwanzaa is the one he wants to back and, and thinks maybe he doesn't go into the market for a centre half but of course until that decision's made and I don't expect a decision you know to have been made at this point until that decision's made we have to see how that kind of plays out really and I think you know, in terms of deadlines on making those decisions, they can't wait until the summer. Jurgen Klopp can't wait to, to, to make a final call on whether Quant is good enough. That that really has to be made around March because that is the, the real crunch time, really, in terms of, especially for Liverpool, who like to get the business done early, like to get in with agents um, uh, uh, and sort all that and make sure that they can sort of blow away the competition as quickly as possible by getting guarantees that they can they can sign that player if they can find an agreement with the club. They have to start doing that, that, that work, really, around March time. So not a long time. Time to, to make that decision on, on whether Bradley is ready to be the backup right back and whether Kwanzaa is ready to be one of four centre half options. But I think that for me will have a real big effect on whether Liverpool do go into that centre half market. But it is good at least to know that they are doing the due diligence, as I say, and they are looking at players like Yoro and, and Diamande with with you know the idea in mind that they may need to dip into that centre half market in in, in the coming in the summer and go for a young option who's got a lot of promise and also some first team minutes behind them now I'm going to move on from the defence now and, and talk about some forwards that have been linked uh, in this window now a couple of links again, again something I've written about for This Is Anfield uh, recently which is Crescencio Summerville at Leeds United and also Michael Elise at Crystal Palace now I think it shows, you know, you can see those links coming up that Liverpool are considering their options in terms of do they need another forward, do you know, do they need to bolster that area of the pitch? But the one thing I would say is that, and, 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 and the, the idea I'm getting from sources I'm speaking to at Liverpool is that at the moment, really, Liverpool feel like they're very well stocked in in the forward area, and you can kind of understand that at the moment, you know. That's not a guaranteed area, again, where Liverpool will, you know, you see these links emerge, you think, well, definitely Liverpool are going to go and look at a forward this summer. If those links are emerging, they must be in the market for a forward this summer. But you look at what they have in those positions at the moment. They've done a lot of work in over the last couple of years. You think of Luis Diaz coming to the club, Cody Gakpo, Darwin Nunez. They invested a lot of money and did a lot of work to sort of, you know, future-proof that forward line a little bit. And, and, and they added a really good mix of profiles. And you've seen this season that firepower has been one of Liverpool's biggest sort of uh, strengths really is that ability to not just have three starting forwards who are excellent but to have two who are on the bench who are ready to come on and make a real impact and I think that's been a big part of why Liverpool have won so many games late, uh, late on is that they've got that real strength and depth in the forward line and again 
Similarly to what I was saying at centre-half, if you add another forward into that mix, will you be able to promise them more, more, uh, minutes, uh, a regular stream of minutes? And will you not be compromising the minutes of the players that are already there? I think that's that's a difficult one. I think that's why I, I kind of find it hard to see another forward maybe coming in this summer. But, of course, the crucial element of that uh, uh, around whether Liverpool need a forward is what happens with Mohamed Salah. Now, that for me, is the big talking point for Liverpool going into this summer. And, and I'll, I'll just touch on it briefly here, is that I think with what's going on in Saudi Arabia at the moment, I think that move is becoming less and less appealing. You've seen Jordan Henderson is already coming back. You've seen Kareem Benzema doesn't want to report for the second half of this season. Maybe it's not working out as nicely as players maybe thought. And I understand that, that Mohamed Salah is a, a, an absolute icon in, Sa- it, it, well, in the Arab world, really, and Saudi Arabia will be a big move for him. And of course, the contract would be absolutely incredible that he got out there. But when you look at the fact that he scored 14 Premier League goals this season, he's got eight assists, 22 goal contributions. No one gets near him for that. Only Erling Haaland has as many goals. You know, they're on 14 each at the top of the Premier League uh, scorers chart. So, to me, he doesn't look like a player who is ready to to leave this standard of football yet. You know, I feel it would be a massive waste. And as I say. You know, the grass isn't always greener on the other side. And I think you see a lot of players not really loving it out in Saudi Arabia. So for me, the chances of him making that move have have maybe lessened over the last 12 months when it seemed, or over the last six months, sorry, when it seemed that it was, you know, Liverpool were delaying the inevitable really and that he would eventually make the move this summer. So I think that for Liverpool sort of forces the hand a little bit in terms of what they do in the forward line. Maybe they do, you know, they are keeping an eye on forwards. At least I have no doubt that he's someone they're looking at and some of them with the numbers he's putting up recently. I think he would be someone that, that, that fits the profile, both age 22 as well. But it's all about whether Liverpool will actually need someone. And I don't think at the moment they would say that they do particularly if they've got a chance to keep Salah, if they can pour more money into giving him a, a couple of years on a contract extension to keep him and, and see if they can get a couple more years out of him, I think that is a, a better route to go down than maybe invest in the forward line. And one final thing I will say actually about the forwards is, you know, yes, the, the, the good age profile and the, the wingers who are scoring, doing quite well this season, but I would say Somerville has got 12, and 23, 12 goals and 23 appearances this season, but it is in the championship. Can he make that step up? And, and Michael Elise say yes, He's got five goals in, in in nine so far this season, but I think his overall rate is nine goals in 72 Premier League games. Now, for me, that's not a scoring rate that tends to really tempt Liverpool in. Uh, so I think both of them really would have to show huge improvement. Elise, he would have to show that he can continue the form he showed this season, which, of course, he needs to avoid injuries to do that. And Somerville, I still think that would be seen as a really big risk for Liverpool to, to make that move this summer without him getting some minutes in a, a top five league because he, he struggled when he was in the Premier League before Leeds' his relegation. So I think you know that, that makes him look like a risky signing and maybe not someone that Liverpool will pull the trigger on this summer. And same with Elise, really, unless he keeps this form going and and I think that that, that's the interesting thing really is that Liverpool so there's a a couple of things that have got to fall into place there is that you need Mohamed Salah possibly to leave and then of course you have to find a forward who's been putting up really big numbers in the top five league and I think that that went for Nunes, Gakpo, Diaz, Jota, Salah of course they'd all done it before before they moved to Liverpool they'd shown that they could score goals at a decent rate and then come into Liverpool fit that style of play and score at even better rates so that's the big question, I think, around those transfer targets um, uh, uh, um, um, whether Liverpool, in fact, at all are going to be looking for a forward. So that pretty much wraps up my, my transfer update. As I said, not a lot to go at in January, but I thought it would be remiss of me not to, to come in and, and give you guys an update and maybe throw forward to the summer when, as I say, we'll have to see what's happening. It's still in that time of year, really, where it's difficult to to, to nail down in, in any concrete sense what Liverpool are planning for the summer. But it, it is an exciting time and, and I think good to, to discuss what the, the targets that they're looking at and the people who, who could be, you know, they're keeping tabs on now but could potentially become targets in the future because, as we know, the transfer news cycle never, never stops. And, uh, you know, I'm sure there'll be some more links that come between the, uh, now and the end of January. So I want you guys to let me know in the comments, as usual, you know, what, what do you think Liverpool need to do this summer? Do you think they're making a mistake by not doing anything in January? Is there an area of the squad you would like to see strengthened at the moment, uh, despite the fact that Liverpool are going well? What would be the one area you would you would add in January to maybe kick them on and make sure that they, they can keep this challenge for four trophies going until the end of the season? As I say, let me know as well what you think they should be doing in the summer. And I'm going to ask you before I leave to, to like and subscribe as usual. And I'm sure with all the games that are coming and this winter break is very nearly over, I will see you very soon.